I already explained the concept of existence of agreement in partnership. As section 4 says, uh, partnership is a relation between the persons who agree to share the profit of the business. They agree to share the business. They agree to conduct the business under a mutual agreement. So, the concept of agreement is necessary to constitute a partnership. And we already studied that no formal or written agreement is necessary. Even an oral or informal agreement is or can helps to constitute a partnership business. But in reality, when someone approaches us to uh, constitute a partnership business, uh, we often advise them to execute a partnership agreement and legalize it. We often advise them to execute a partnership agreement and legalize it. This is because, this is because if there is such agreement, the partners will be in a position to understand the way to conduct the business, their role in the business, their responsibilities, obligations, power, etc, etc. And they are also in a position to understand the profit sharing ratio, what they can take from the partnership, the interest from capital, the salary part, etc. Moreover, it will help to avoid dispute, to settle the disputes between them. So it is quite often to advise, but usual to advise them to execute a partnership deal. If there is such a partnership deal, if there is such a partnership deal, then, then the business, the partnership business should be governed by such mutual agreement. If there is a partnership deal, then such business, such partnership business should be governed by the mutual agreement and remember again the partnership business should be carried on the partnership should be carried out based on the clauses laid down in the agreement remember once again if there is such agreement if there is a partnership agreement executed between the partners then such partnership business should be governed by such mutual agreements and the business should be conducted carried out based on the clauses laid down in the agreement and this agreement is often called, many of them you know, which is called as partnership deal. That agreement is often called as partnership deal. So if there is partnership deal, the partner should comply with the contents in the partnership deal. They, they should conduct their business according to the clauses laid down in the partnership deal. This is all about the agreement of partnership so it is preferable in reality it is preferable even though the act says no formal or written agreement is required it is preferable to have an agreement executed between the partners and legalized it because if there is such legalized agreement even legal implications can be brought into this is all about the agreement of partners which is called as partnership deed then it is usual to find the following contents in a partnership deed. Let us discuss one by one. First of all, the name of the firm. The name of the firm. It should be the partnership deed should be such comprehensive such that it should be in a position to avoid the disputes between the partner partners. Okay. So the part while drafting the partnership deed, it should it should be comprehensive. You should include all such points which brings a light into the way of conducting business to the partners. So, the, the following clauses can be found. What, first of all, the name of the firm. Firm means the partnership business. Usually the persons in the partnership is, are, the partnership are called as partners and the partners are collectively called as firm. And there will be a firm name under which the business will be conducted. So, the name of the firm and the place of business, the registered office of the business, the nature of business, okay, the name of the partners, their capital contribution, the profit sharing ratio, interest, interest on capital, interest on drawings, interest on partners, loan, salary of the partners, valuation of goodwill, we will study it later part, okay, and the procedures of reconstitution, reconstitution means admission of partners, retirement, death, and procedures of dissolution, procedures for settlement of disputes, Accounts, audits, etc. In, the, in these all elements will be included in a partnership deal and should be comprehensive. All details should be put into in agreement. So this is what is called as partnership deal. And if there is partnership deal, then the partner should comply with the clauses laid down in the partnership deal. Okay. So someone may ask, 
So what is the role of partnership act? In, in the case of companies, the members, the company should follow the provisions in the act. So in the case of partnership, if you have said that the agreement itself is enough to carry out the business. So what is the role of a partnership deed? See students, a deed is executed based on the provisions contained in the partnership act. That means the deed is within the ambit, within the scope of the act. It should not, the clauses contained in the deed should not override, go beyond the powers of the provisions of the act. Which means that if you are doing business in accordance with the partnership deed, it is equal to comply with the partnership act. But in reality we say partnership deed is enough. The partner should not look into the provisions contained in the act. Look into a scenario where a business, a partnership business is uh, executed or conducted without execution of a deed. Let us look into a scenario where a partnership business is conducted without execution of a deed. We already learned, we already learned if there is deed, if there is a legalized, executed, formalized deed, then the contents in the deed will apply to conduct the business. No role for the act. No role for the act. But if there is no partnership, if there is only an oral agreement, then, then the act. The provisions of act will come into play. That means such partners have to comply with the provisions of the act if there is no partnership deed. So once again, if there is no formalized executed deed for conducting the business of a partnership, then the act, the provisions of the act will come into play. So listen, there are certain provisions in the partnership act which have an effect in the accounts, in the execution of transactions, in the partnership business, not the partnership business. Let's look into. Okay, these provisions are also important for your problem aspects also. Okay, then look into one by one. If there is no an executed deed, then the pro provisions contained in the act will apply in the case where the deed is silent. There are two situations. There will be a deed and some provisions may be cited or there, there will not be a deed at all. So in both cases, in both cases, what are the two cases? There will be a deed or there is a deed but certain provisions, certain provisions are silent. This is the first situation. Okay. Then the second situation is there is no deed at all. There is no deed at all. In both these situations, these provisions will apply. So let us be, see one by one. Again, two situations. What are two situations? There is There are certain clauses in the deed which are silent. And which should be included but are silent. And there is no deed at all. In such cases, the following provisions of the Partnership Act will apply. What are the provisions? No partner has right to salary if there is no deed or if the deed is silent about the salary part then the partner has no right to avail the salary. Then no interest on capital. If the deed is silent or if there is no deed at all then no interest can be received on the capital contributed by the partner. No interest to be charged on drawings made by the partner. Interest at the rate of 6% Interest at the rate of 6% is allowed to the partner's loan. The partners may sometimes contribute to the business excess and over the capital for the smooth running of the business, for the smooth financial position of the business. So in such cases, it is treated as partner's loan and the partners are eligible for interest on such loan if the partnership deed is silent. Or there is no deed at all with regard to mentioning the provisions of interest on partners loan. Then as per the act, an interest at the rate of 6% per annum can be charged to the partners loan. Okay. And the last point which is the most important point, the profits and losses are shared equally. The profits and losses are shared equally. I already mentioned 
A partner should be entitled to profit. No person can be called as a partner if he is not entitled to share the profits of the business. If the deed is silent with regard to the contribution or sharing of profit, or if there is no deed at all, then, then the profit and losses are shared equally. So this is the effect of provisions of Partnership Act when there is no need deed or when the deed is silent with regard to certain aspect. So, repeating once again, if there is no deed at all or if certain provisions are silent in the deed, then some provisions of Act, Partnership Act will apply. In such cases, the partner is not entitled to receive salary, no interest on capital, no interest to be charged on the drawings of the partners, interest on partners loan is 6% per annum and the profits and losses to be shared equally. For example, for example, if there is a deed and the deed says 9% on interest on capital. 9% on interest on capital, then the partner is entitled to get 9%. But there is a deed and the deed is silent with regard to the interest on capital. Then you have to look into the provisions of the Act. What the Act says, no interest on capital. No interest on capital. Again, again, the deed says, the partners are entitled to salary 6,000 per month. 6,000 per month. If the deed says so, then the partner is entitled to 6,000 per month. But if the deed is silent with regard to the salary aspect of there is no deed at all, the partner is not entitled to receive the salary. So what is the effect of partnership, execution of partnership deed? Deed should be, I already said, deed should be comprehensive. It should contain all the details with regard to the profit share ratio, interest on capital, interest on drawings, interest on partners, loan, etc. etc. If there is a deed, you can avail the benefit of the deed. If there is no deed, you have to look into the provisions of the Act and what the Act says. Please, please, no salary, no interest on capital, no interest on charge to be in drawings. The partners loan 6%. Another example. If, the, if I have contributed to my partnership business uh, a loan for rupees 80,000 and there is a mutual agreement between the partners as 12% interest on partners loan. If there is a deed, I will get 12%. If there is no deed, I will get only 6%. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot withdraw more than 6% as my interest on interest on low. Okay. So this is all about the effect of uh, provisions of the act when the when certain contents in the partnership deed is silent or when there is no partnership deed at all. Moving on to the profit sharing ratio. We know the profit sharing is an inevitable ingredient and is exclusively defined under section 4. It is inevitable ingredient exclusively defined under section 4. What section 4 says? It is a relation between persons who agree to share the profits of the business. And we already know that the no person shall be treated as a partner unless he or she is entitled to share the profits of the business. So profit sharing ratio. How this profit sharing ratio is fixed between the partners? It is based on the mutual agreement between the partners. They will arrive at how the profit should be shared. Okay. This may be based on their capital contribution or this may be based on their effort. There's, there are two ways of fixing profit share and ratio. One is based on, it may be based on the capital contribution. The other it may be based on the effort of the partners. For example, for example, if there are four partners, A, B, C, D. There are four partners A, B, C, D. And A have contributed rupees 1 lakh, B have contributed rupees 50,000, C 50,000 and D 25,000. Then they can fix the profit sharing ratio based on the capital contribution. How much? 4 is 2, 2 is 2, 2 is 2, 1. That will be the profit sharing ratio. And if it is based on effort, if it is based on effort, for example, take the same example, 
A, B, C, D are partners. Okay. And A are, A and B are contributing more to the business. We already discussed any one of them carry or all of them carry the business. So, A and B mutually, they all the partners mutually agreed that A and B will contribute more to the business. Then, both A and B can receive more share out of the total profit of the business. So there are two ways of fixing the profit sharing ratio. One is the capital contribution and the other is the divide. And it can be also based on any other way as desired by the partners of the firm. So capital contribution or effort or in any other manner as mutually agree between the partners. The main thing to be pointed out is that if there is no profit sharing ratio, if the profit if there is no profit sharing ratio in the deal, which means that the deal is silent with regard to the profit sharing, then we already discussed what happens. The profit sharing ratio should be equally done. That is what is mentioned the partnership act. So if there is no clause with regard to the sharing of profit in the deed, if there is no deed at all, then the profit sharing ratio will be, should be equally done. This is all about the profit sharing ratio concept. So repeating, capital contribution, effort or in any other manner as mutually agree between the partners, they can decide, they can fix the profit sharing ratio. If the deed is silent, equally it should be shared equally. Now we will discuss about the change in profit sharing ratio whether the profit sharing ratio can be changed. Okay, absolutely, of course, because of the prevailing conditions, financial, economic conditions, business conditions, the profit sharing ratio can be changed. Okay, there are two situations where a profit sharing ratio can be changed as per the partnership deed, as per the partnership act, as per the way of conducting the partnership business. These are the two conditions. Situation one, one, the existing partners may change their profit sharing ratio. The existing partners may change their profit sharing ratio. For example, for example, A, B, C are partners. A, B, C are partners sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 3. So A's share is 2 by 6, B share is 1 by 6, C's share is 3 by 6. Now C decided to act as a silent partner. What is silent partner? He is not taking an effort for the success of the business. He merely a partner as an investor and we share the profit also. So now C decides that he will act as a silent partner because he got another job so he will look into it. Okay. So C decided to act as a silent partner and asked A and B to manage the business. And now what about A and B? Their profit sharing ratio is 2 by 6 and 1 by 6. Now A can, A and B can take more profit portion because they are contributing more to the business. So they can change the profit sharing ratio. For example, 3 is 2, 2 is 2, 1. So because of the prevailing conditions or situations uh, uh, that emerged a change in profit sharing ratio in the first situation. And second situation, reconstitution of the business. The second situation speaks about the reconstitution of the business. What is reconstitution of partnership business? Admission of a partner, retirement of a partner, death of a partner will result in change in profit share ratio. Admission, a new partner is coming to the business to share the profits. Retirement, an existing partner is going out of the business. All these cases, the existing profit share ratio may be changed. So, a change in profit sharing ratio is also inevitable and it will happen as the business goes on. So, what we have to study here is, what is the effect of change in profit sharing ratio? What is the effect of change in profit sharing ratio in the partners? And secondly, Calculation of new profit sharing ratios under different situations. So these aspects have to be dealt in detail before moving to the important aspects of 
partnership account. So, what are the two aspects? What is the effect of change in profit sharing ratio in the partners? And calculation of new profit sharing ratio under different situations. So, once again, it is inevitable to change the profit sharing ratio based on the economic, financial and business conditions. And there may be two situations under which the PSR can be changed. The existing partners may change the profit sharing ratio or the reconstitution of the business may result in change in profit sharing ratios. Students, I will explain the effect of changes in PSR to the partners through various examples. So, take, moving to the first example. Example 1. Let's listen. There are three partners A, B and C. They are currently sharing the profits and losses in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. That means A's share 3 by 6, B's share 2 by 6 and C's share 1 by 6. Okay. And they have decided to change the profit sharing ratio to share the future profits as 2 is to 2 is to 1. 2 is to 2 is to 1. So what is the effect of uh, changing the ratio from 3 is to 2 is to 1 to 2 is to 2 is to 1. So let us compare the new ratio with the old ratio. So let us compare the new ratio with the old ratio. So A's old ratio, old PSR is 3 by 6. Okay. 3 by 6 means we can say it as 50 percentage. We can say it as 50 percentage. Then is new PSR profit sharing ratio is how much? 2 by 5. 2 by 5. Okay. That means 40 percentage. What is the result? What is the result? A have lost 10 percentage. Previously he had 50 percentage of the profit. Now he can have only 40 percentage of the future profit. That means A is loss in the profit. Future profit is 10 percentage the loss. This loss in the language of partnership business is called as sacrifice. Sacrifice. So A has sacrificed 10 percentage from his existing profit to share the future profit. What is the case of the B? B, B's old PSR profit sharing ratio is 2 by 6 and B's new profit sharing ratio is 2 by 5. Okay, 2 by 6 means 33.33 percentage. 2 by 5 means 40 percentage. 40 percentage. That means the old ratio has increased to 40 percentage. B has gained 6.67 percentage to share the future profits of the business. As per the old sharing ratio, he is entitled to only 33.33 percentage. As per the new ratio, he is entitled to 40 percent. That means 6.67 percent has increased to the future profits. So, in the business language, in the partnership language, it is known as gain. It is known as gain. So, B have gained 6.67 percent to the future profits. What about C? C. C is old PSR. What is old PSR? 1 by 6. That means 16.67 percentage. 16.67 percentage. And C is new PSR. New PSR. How much? 1 by 5. That means 20 percentage. Again for C, his previous ratio is 16.67 percent. It is increased to 20 percent to the future profits. So again C has gained... 3.33 percentage to share the future profits of the business. So what is the effect to the partners due to the changes in profit sharing ratio? A has sacrificed 10 percentage. B has gained 6.61 percentage. C has gained 3.33 percentage. 6.61 percentage plus 3.33 percentage is equal to 10 percentage. Is equal to 10 percent. This 10 percentage is taken by C and B from A's profit. So A has sacrificed 10 percentage and B and C have gained 6.67 percentage and 3.33 percentage respectively. So what is the effect? 
loss and gain. One partner in the losing side and one the other partners are in the gaining side. Here, here the B and the C has to contribute to the loss incurred to the A. B and C has to contribute to make the good, the loss incurred, the sacrificed by Mr. A. So this is the effect of changes in PV, sorry, profit sharing ratio. Let us take another example. Let us take another example. This is the change in this example. Example 1 speaks about the changes in the excess changes of profit sharing ratio between the existing partners. Now let us take another example. Example 2. A, B, C are existing partners sharing profits and losses. 3 is 2, 2 is 2. Well, they admitted, they admitted partner D, another person D and they changed the profit sharing ratio as 2 is 2, 2 is 2, 1 is 2, 1. Here, A's share is, new share is 2 is 2 by 6. B's new share is 2 by 6. Okay, C's new share is 1 by 6 and D's share is 1 by 6. Okay. A's old share is 3 by 6, B is 2 by 6 and C is 1 by 6. So let us analyze, compare the old ratio with the new ratio. Old PSR, how much old PSR? 3 by 6, that is 50 percentage. New PSR is 2 by 6, that is 2 by 6, 33.33 percentage. Again, A has sacrificed 16 points. So, A has sacrificed, A is in the losing side. Then what about B? B's. B's old PSR. How much? 2 by 6. 33.333 percentage. Then B's new PSR. Therefore, B status before D's admission and after D's admission is C. Because his share is 2 by 6 before admission and after 2 by 6 that is 33.33 percent. So B has not gained or lose at all. This is same in the case of C as well. Because C is profit sharing ratio before D's admission is 1 by 6 and after D's admission is 1 by 6. So both B and C has not gained or lose because of the admission of D as a partner. They are in the same status. Moving on to the status of D. D is new to the partnership and he has obtained one sixth share in the future profit. One sixth share means 16.67 percentage of the total profit. From where it is obtained? From A's share because A has sacrificed 16.67 percentage and directly given to D. B's and C's position is not changed. So here D is the gainer and A is the sacrificer. So as per the concept of profit sharing ratio, effect on changes in profit sharing ratio, D has to contribute, D has to make the loss good which is sacrificed by A. So to conclude with regard to the effect of changes in profit sharing ratio, if one partner is gained, the other partner is sacrificed, his share of profit, share in the future profits, the partner who has gained has to contribute, has to make the loss good to the other partner who has sacrificed his share in the future profits. So this is the effect of changes in profit sharing ratio.